morning guys welcome back to the channel appreciate everybody tuning in out all the billions of YouTubes that are out there but uh, a nice snowy cold day here in Colorado it's about 15 degrees this is part 11 of the Mercedes 1929 Mercedes SSK build many of the techniques I'm using in the video you can apply towards your restoration projects on your cars uh, if you're building a car from scratch, just restoring one, modifying a car, all the welding techniques, all the electrical, everything can be used on your project. Check out my playlist down below. I have solar projects, e-bike projects. I have a ton of RV remodel type projects and so on. So there might be some other videos that might be of interest to you. In this video, we're gonna be covering uh, some wrap up items, finishing up wiring with the easy wiring harness. Uh, doing a speedometer, reviewing a really cool solution for radio that I found. Uh, you're really going to love that. Let's get into workshop, get warmed up, and let's get to it. So the next project is getting the steering column wired into the fuse block uh, for left right turn signal, brake light switch, all that good stuff. And the fuse block that I put in is a GM fuse block made by Easy Wiring. I'll put the link in the description. I showed this uh, being installed in a previous video. But off of the fuse block, I have a bundle of wires here. There's eight of them. And it has the connectors on here. And this is intended to go into a GM type fuse block. But this is a Ford Pinto steering column. So what I need to do is whack all these ends off and use a connector and cut off these because I can't buy a Ford connector that goes on here. And then I'll graft on uh, a new connector. The connector that I'm using is a nylon connector. Um, I got a whole bag of these. I think it was on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description if you want to pick up a couple. Uh, but it comes with uh, eight pin fuse plugs, which is what I need. They also have them in two and four and, and different multiples. But this is an eight pin. And then I have the uh, connectors that I'm going to strip back the wires, crimp them on. And then I'm going to go the extra step and solder each one of these on. And then after the connectors are on to the wire, you shove them in the back of the, uh, the unit here. Snaps in place. And then uh, you have the female side also uh, with the regular, almost with like spade connectors. But they're designed to go in here and lock in. And then when I'm all done, I could just plug in. So anytime I want to take the steering column out, I could just undo that connector and take the column out. Working on getting the brake light switch going, um, the one that was on the car, it's all jammed up and not working right. So I acquired this late 70s Ford, like off a of Ford Bronco, like a 79 Bronco brake light switch. And uh, what it does is when the plunger's in, doesn't have continuity. And then when it lets out, um, it trips. So the arm of the brake pedal uh, down in on the top is going to be riding up against this plunger. And these are e easily accessible at uh, O'Reilly's or Napa for like six bucks. But uh, I need to weld a piece of angle and then I need a round hole mount for the switch, which is what I'm going to do right there. And then it has two nuts on either side so I can adjust it in and out for the right plunger depth. So I'm going to go ahead and weld this up and then I'll take this bracket and I'll show you uh, welding on a car, hook up my wires and I'll have a brake light switch. This is what it looks like with the switch in. And I'll just weld this on the top bracket of the brake pedal. And uh, plunger will push in and the brake light will come on. All right, doctor all draped up, ready for surgery. And here's the bracket. You can see that down in there. And I'm gonna put some welds along here and on the inside and that'll hold it, put my switch in and I am done. All welded in and uh, ready to mount my switch down below there. And this is what it looks like with the switch installed. Just touching the brake arm. Done. Nice snowy day in Colorado here on a Friday. Just an update on the wiring. I'm spending a ton of time on the wiring. And the biggest challenge was getting the wiring harness from the steering column, the Pinto steering column, 
adapted to the GM fuse block. There are 10 wires coming out of the column itself just for turn signals and hazard, that sort of thing in the horn button. And it took me about six hours. It was a real biatch to do, um, tripping out each wire continuity, testing everything. Uh, you've got a common for your left and right turn signals uh, and rear. So you have to figure out which is the front turn signal right, left turn signal rear, and so on um, to get the common. So I figured all that out. And then you have your brake fuse, I mean your brake flasher coming in as a common. And that has to connect when the steering column is turned left and right because you only have one filament uh, in the bulbs in the back for bright and uh, the other filaments for the parking light. So you're using the bright filament in the rear bulbs for both brake and turn signal. So to do that, there's some switching up in the steering column you got to figure out. But anyway, did all that, um, got the hazard wire figured out to go to the hazard flasher and uh, everything's working good here but uh, and then also you have the horn button had to figure out which ones are that so I was able to get that working pray here the clicking and I got a nice Mercedes emblem now for the center of the steering wheel which looks pretty cool but uh, the GM fuse block works out great again this is by easy wiring uh, try to get a shot of it here kind of tight up underneath the dash but uh, this is great if you have a hot rod restoration I have this in my uh, Tesla Super Beetle that I'm building where I pulled out all the crappy VW wiring put in a nice GM fuse block this is by easy wiring I'll leave the Amazon link in the description it comes in a 12 circuit and a 20 circuit it's got everything and also modern blade fuses and What's nice is the wire is labeled every four inches what it is. You see, the, maybe you see the printing on the wire. So each wire going the front and back of the car, the engine is all labeled every four inches with what it is. But, uh, and then I've got, I uh, started doing a split loom to get everything covered up pretty good. I like using split loom and it's easy to put on, protects the wires. And then this is the high and low beam switch, the old GM high and low beam switch. It goes on a toe kick. You just hit it with your foot. I got the headlight wired ready to go. And everything's covered with, with a split loom here. Um, sell this at auto parts store, but I'll put a link in the description too for Amazon on this. It's a lot cheaper than buying it at O'Reilly's and Napa. I like taking the extra step too and taking a zip tie and tying it around to hold them shut in case it's under some stress. Next project is putting this up and then I have the cover, the original Pinto cover that'll cover all that up and then I'll tuck all the wiring out of the way so you're not hitting with your foot. That finishes that up. All the wiring is complete. Back to the fuse block. I have everything working, the lights, headlights, turn signals, everything. Um, and I'll do the final split loom on everything, make it look nice. And then I'll take you around for a final test of all the lights. I have three holes that were drilled into the mahogany dashboard. And this mahogany, as I showed in previous videos, is really thick. That's almost like an inch thick of wood. But there were three holes drilled here for the indicator lights, left and right, turn signal, and then high and low beam. It was drilled in here in probably 1985 when this was made. I was able to get these little LED indicator lights. I already have these installed. Um, and this is for the high beam, but you see it's a lot bigger. But what I was able to figure out is I have a little selection of grommets here. And if I take this grommet, the one I'm using, and if I cut the flange off the back, just the little tip on the one side that sticks out, trim it off with a razor blade, um, the indicator light will mount right in the middle of it, and then I can press it into the hole and it turned out really nice. All three indicator lights are now installed. I'll wire them up when I pull the whole dash out. A few more things done on the wiring. I got the toggle switch for the fog lamps up there, the driving lights, and in the front. Got the wiring harness all made up, split loom everywhere. So I just need to tuck all this away. And, uh, but everything's functional now, so uh, 
let's do a test on it. And then there's the other side. And all the split loom and the, all the wiring complete. All right, let's just go through the wiring now. So we have parking lamps, we have headlamps, high and low beam, fog lamps, four-way flashers, turn signal left, turn signal right, Okay, now for the rear, rear light, we have parking lights, brakes, brakes are working great, four-way flashers, turn the key on, right turn signal, left turn signal, and as I mentioned earlier too, you have to have the brake light working. So there's the brake light on the right side in the rear because we're using the same filament for the turn signal and the brake. And then there's the left side. That was a few hours into getting this done. Looking good. Next is the dash. Check this out. I found this on eBay for about 20 bucks. It's a shift knob uh, replacement and it's wood. It'll match the steering wheel and the dashboard. This is the original Pinto piece of plastic of some sort. But the shift pattern in it is forward, first, second, third, and then up to the left for reverse. And this just happens to have the same shift panel. And this just happens to have the same shift. This happens to have the same shift pattern uh, up to the left to reverse, so very cool. But the challenge is, is that the threads are different. This is a half inch 20 thread, and I don't even know what this is, but it's a lot smaller. But what I'm going to have to do is, and I couldn't find a thread adapter for this, but what I'm going to do is I went down to my local Ace Hardware where the friendly people are and found a bolt uh, that fits this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to whack off this bolt, whack off the top thread on the shifter, and then I'll grind this down a little bit, and I'm going to weld this top bolt onto the shifter, and uh, that'll give me my half-inch 20 thread. trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the radio and I had a couple comments left on a previous video or so and I have this square cutoff from the 70s um, into the dashboard and I guess it's meant to get a vintage radio from that era and then drill a hole for the like the volume knob and then uh, typically the right knob was the tuning back in the good old days but I didn't want to go that right they're extremely expensive and I have the holes here. So what I found was really cool, and that's a gauge radio. And uh, this goes into the center hole here. And I'm just gonna pull out the tachometer. I really don't need a tachometer and put this next to the speedometer. But this is AM FM radio, 240 watts, which is crazy. And uh, the neat thing is it also has Bluetooth in it. So I could pair it to my phone and play uh, Pandora on my phone, whatever. Uh, but it's got all these honking cables coming out the back for different power amps and antennas and uh, inputs. But the cool thing again is it has Bluetooth built into it. So I'm going to insert that in there and that's what my solution is going to be for those who have been following the channel. And I'll also put the link, uh, Amazon link in the description. And the complete uh, unit here was about 100 bucks on Amazon. So this gauge radio is made for boats, marine applications, so it is watertight. So in the event I get caught in a downpour with a microburst we have here in Colorado, 
Um, this is all sealed, so water's not gonna do anything to it. It's meant for that. And also people can use these on ATVs, but uh, I think that's gonna look pretty cool. Plus my hand's gonna be right here in the steering wheel. And then I could just tap the controls without reaching all the way over here to do something on the radio. But uh, that's gonna be really cool having that. Next item is going to be making a switch panel. And what I want to do is have a piece of material come underneath the dash, hang down maybe like an inch and a half across here, have it like six or seven inches. And then I'll have my headlight switch mounted right there. I'll have my toggle switch for the fog lights. I'll have another switch for interior lights. And then I'm going to have my blower fan switch high and low. And then I'm going to have my temperature control, which is a choke cable. Uh, goes to the water valve on the heater. But I'm going to lay that out and uh, see what kind of material I'm going to make that out of. Got the toggle switch and control panel made. Decided to make it out of the same fiberglass gel coated as the rest of the car. I cut out all the door panels, so I had all the extra fiberglass that's over there. So I uh, cut that out, did an edge trim on it, and I think that's going to look pretty cool. And then uh, when I take the dash out to do the wiring, I'll just put a couple screws in from behind, and uh, yeah, I think that's going to look pretty sharp. It is now time to get that dash out and get it wired up. Bit of history, there's a stamp on the back of this mahogany dashboard, custom made by the wood, and looks like Nook, N-O-C-K, or Rock, the wood rock, in uh, Homestead, Florida, 1985. But uh, got it pretty complete. It's ready to go back in the car again. But uh, I have terminal strips here that I'm using uh, with a bridge across one side. So I made this one the lights, uh, which are the dash lights. Uh, this is all my grounds coming here and a ground wire that will be tied to the frame. And then I have all of my gauge power. Um, so when I turn the key on, all the gauges power up like the fuel the temperature, etc. Um, also, lights come into the speedometer. Speedometer is easy. Uh, added grounds on the speedometer, grounds on everything. And then over here, I have my indicator lights for my turn signals and my high beam, left, right, and high beam. And that's each coming into a small terminal block here, which I'll tie in the wiring harness on this side. So this is the ammeter on the end. I don't like using an ammeter on a car because all your current to operate the car is running through this and then back out to the car to measure the current flow. Um, if this ever failed, I'd be on the side of the road. Nothing in the car would function electrically that's, that's running through this ammeter and this is made in the 70s. So I ordered a two inch white gauge uh, for just voltage 
and I have my wires just kind of sitting here ready to go and I'll be in tomorrow and I'll just pop it in and then I'll just uh, monitor the voltage, which is really what I need, I like doing. But uh, it's ready to go back in the car, um, my gauge radio, uh, the power's on it, ready to plug into the the wiring harness for the get, for the radio power. And uh, here's all of my RCA jack outputs for subs and all that good stuff. And then my next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my speaker wires connected for left and right channels. I think I'm just gonna have two speakers in the car in the rear, back in the seat liner in the, in the back seat. So I'll just find left and right and I'll have this all tied in. Uh, be easier to do while it's on the bench than would it be, uh, you know, when the dash is in. But uh, looking good. Wow, a lot of progress. Dash is back in. All the gauges are wired. Uh, my center switch console is all done. So this first switch is gonna be the fan override for the electric fan on the radiator on the front in case the sensor goes bad. I'm gonna click that on turn the fan on manually if I see the temperature going up too high. Uh, headlights, got all the gauge lights working. Next is the fog lights up front. Next is interior lights, which I have yet to wire. I'm gonna get a couple LED stick-on type units uh, and wire that into the switch. Next switch is fan high and low. Turn the key on. So there's the fan on high and then low up underneath there. Center is off. And then my heat control, which is a cable. I use just a lawnmower choke cable uh, that goes to the water valve on one of the radiator hose going to the uh, heater unit inside here. So it works slick. So that's on. And shut the water off. I got the radio working great. I can't show it. For those that you don't know, YouTube, if I play music that's not paid for, uh, I get a copyright protection error and they basically can uh, shut the video down and do all kind of fun stuff to you on YouTube. So uh, all the music that you hear me use in my YouTube is also, it's all free, copyright free uh, music by Ben Sound um, that I use. But uh, anyway, it's working great, powers right up. And it's pretty slick and it even has the weather band on it. So that's pretty cool. I actually have the weather radio in here at 162.450 megahertz. So we're gonna be five below zero tomorrow night. Great. See you. But uh, anyway. I think that's enough for one video, a lot of content, and uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, helps the algorithm, helps YouTube promote all my videos. Uh, very time consuming filming and uh, doing all the editing and everything, but I uh, appreciate everybody watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, any comments you have, stuff that you've seen that I've done right that you like, anything that I've done wrong that I should be doing different, please let me know in the comments section. So let's go ahead and wrap it up and thanks for watching.